Hello everyone, take a check out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with Vander, and today we're going to talk about subclasses for the Paladin in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the uh, Oath of Glory and the Oath of the Watchers. Um, but before we begin talking about that, Vander is going to talk to us some of the optional features that your Paladins can choose now. Probably one of my favorite classes. Uh, I'm a big fan of Paladin myself, and they get a lot of fun new things. Uh, first, you get some new spells. So from second to fifth level, you learn some new things. Uh, the only fun one I will talk about is that you get Summon Celestial, which is fitting, and I'm excited that you get that. Uh, for second level, you also get new fighting style options, basically just taking what you had before and giving you more options with that. So you now can either choose Blessed Warrior, where you grab two cleric cantrips and you get to know those and use your charisma for that instead. So make you a little more holy, I guess. Uh, you also can choose blind fighting, which is great. 10 foot range where you can just fight no matter what is going on, basically. And interception, which basically if someone within five feet of you uh, is going to get hit with an attack, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage, which is helpful in a lot of situations, especially since you're most likely carrying a shield as a paladin. Not always, but pretty likely. Um, at third level, you get harness divine power. Uh, for this, uh, you can actually regain a spell slot, which, considering you don't have a lot of them, makes that pretty damn useful. Uh, it is basically first to third level for that spell slot. Uh, it depends on your level, but still pretty helpful. On fourth level, and then every ASI increase, you also now have the option to switch your fighting style. So if you've adjusted over time, maybe you're not a protection style with your shield anymore, you want to switch over to interception. Maybe you want to get rid of those Blessed Warrior cantrips and you want to do some blind fighting. Now you can. Uh, but the first of the two we're going to talk about is Path to Glory. Uh, you probably, if you've seen our video, uh, talking about it on Theros, uh, you'll probably hear a little more about it, but uh, we'll definitely give you at least a rundown of our opinions now. Uh, Manny, what were your opinions on? Uh, so, Oath of Glory, for those that may not know, um, this originally appeared at Theros. They brought it uh, officially back to, to Tasha, and the idea is that your, your main goal in life is to win battles and to achieve glory. Um, that, that is your, that's your main thing. You're pretty much a Thor and Captain America wrapped up in one. Um, I'll start with saying that for off the back, the channel divinities are, are amazing. I like the fact that you could choose to be, you could choose, either, well, you could choose both of them actually, but, but the options that they give you is uh, purely exactly. So like for 10 minutes, you get like a bandage all your uh, dexterity and the athletics and rolls and things like that, um, or inspiring smite uh, instead of doing extra damage, radiant damage, as a normal Divine Smite would do. This instead, like, you, you inspire your companions so much that you give them temporary hit points as you're battling. Um, I, I have to admit, that that sounds pretty cool. Anything that keeps the party alive, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I agree. I do like the new channel divinities. They're pretty fun. Um, I personally liked uh, Glorious Defense. Um, and that was my favorite, uh, basically because I always like the idea of finding ways to make your help your party stay alive. <laughs> um, and I think this does a real good job of it. It also allows you to potentially get in the big strike as well. So if someone within 10 feet of you is hit by an attack, you can add your charisma mod to their AC, uh, potentially making that attack miss. And if that attack misses, you can potentially get a weapon attack on well you don't you do get a weapon attack on them which potentially means extra damage and i think they have this set up so that if you're uh flanking somebody in battle and that other person is about to get hit because no one wants to attack you because you're the beefy guy you can still give them some defense and then potentially with advantage get in a nice critical strike with a smite added on and i just think that is a mwah, perfect great build I love it. Um, but yeah, but my favorite is definitely Glorious Defense at 15, at uh, um, level 15. Aura of Alacrity uh, is, is okay. It's pretty cool. You know, you pretty much gain supernatural extra, a little bit extra supernatural speed, and you may also uh, give that ability to your companions as well, depending how close they are to you. Um, Living Legend uh, at 20th level. Um, I have to admit, at, at first I was, I was, 
I wasn't too sure if I liked this. Uh, but now that I, the more I think about it, it's not bad. I, I wish you could get that a little bit earlier than 20th level. Um, but uh, I like the idea that like for this one minute, 10 turns, you, um, uh, you, you don't miss. You always, you always hit your, your target. Uh, you, you never fail a safe throw. Uh, you have uh, advantage on charisma checks. Uh, you're pretty much at that point like the, the, uh, the spirit of the gods are in you and just it, everyone can see that and nothing can stop you. Um, it's a, a walking bomb. Um, so that it, it, role playing wise, that's kind of cool. You know, I could, it's, it, I could see, I could imagine a lot of really cool scenarios from it. Overall, I'd say I, I think this is a very good class. Yeah, it's enjoyable. I, I think, again, I agree with you. I think Aura of Alacrity is probably the biggest uh, holdback for, for auras. There's a lot of really great auras out there. The one we're going to talk about in Watchers or the Sentinel, I think even fits this better. It, it It's about running, rushing first, headstrong into, into glory, into battle. Um, and I think even there's just other ones that could have fit a lot better because uh, you have so many you're very versatile and this helps you with speed but everything you've been doing either helps your teammates stay alive and stay bolstered or helps you get better strikes in and this this doesn't do it more more it's like it keeps your team with you almost as if like you were forming like a phalanx or something which i guess still makes sense for what it was inspired from but it's not as not as awe-inspiring as some of the other auras um and and FYI, people who are seeing this, or uh, the Way of Glory, it, what used to be called Way of Heroism in Theros, and I think the UA it was originally from. So there might be a name switch if you're doing a comparison. Of, of the Watchers, um, as another one that I that I like a lot, uh, only because it, it reminds me of um, reminds me a little bit of Buffy, reminds me a little bit of Highlander. You know, there's these group of individuals that watch over things and try to keep order. And pretty much the idea of this in D and D setting is that so, as you know, most paladins they tend to uh, turn undead or, or variations of that. But for this one, you can uh, go beyond that to do extra planar creatures, so demons or any type of aliens. Uh, you can just uh, banish them. At their level, you get Watcher's Will, which allows you to for one minute you and your chosen and the chosen creatures have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, and abjure the extra planar. Uh, you can use your Chal Divinity to castigate unworldly beings. Um, so a turn creature must spend its turns trying to move as far away uh, from you as it can. So I, I, I like that. I like the idea that you know it, it you know uh, that you're a demon hunter of some sort. Um, yeah, makes you a little more versatile, especially with normally it only ever being uh, undead creatures, like you said, like the fact that it's instead of you just you against the undead or the unnatural, now it's against, you know, things against your plane. So now anything that's not from the material plane in, in this specific situation, um, you, you are adept against fighting or <laughs> fighting against, which I think is great. Um, I love the aura for this one aura of the sentinel um is that when you roll initiative you get to add your uh proficiency bonus to it and so does everybody else within your aura i love things that increase uh initiative because i think it is a stat that gets ignored a lot um and it can be very important sometimes it's not uh sometimes people don't roll well or the exact order doesn't matter but sometimes being able to win that order and to have your whole team go first could be a big difference between life and death so or of the sentinel perfect love it i do like vigilant rebuke uh i thought it was a, a cool thing where that if something you're um that you're trying to destroy one of your your arch i guess i don't want to say nemesis you know arch fiends that you're fighting against um that is somehow make their wisdom intelligence or charisma saving throw against you that as a reaction you could even do some damage uh extra damage to them as a as a as you know spike them back i thought that's kind of cool you know it makes them seem more dangerous to to uh those type of creatures yeah agreed uh and then the capstone uh mortal bulwark at level 20. um you Basically, as all the other ones do, you get the form of what you are. So you're the, basically like a form of the Oath of a Watcher uh, Paladin. And it gives you True Sight, which I think makes sense. You being able to track down the things you're looking for, advantage on basically extra planar creatures. Um, and then the 
best part of the capstone, which I think fits what your goals as this type of paladin are to, um, to potentially banish a creature is great. So they have to make a charisma saving throw against your spell save DC if you hit them with an attack um, and be banished. And I think that is a great way to do it, especially because th that is what you are about. You're about protecting this plane against all the other ones or whichever plane you're currently on against all the other ones. And it's a really fun capstone at level 20. Can you imagine that you're just like bonking people and just like you're going down a line, you're just like do 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 and they just <laughs> back to the fire plane, <laughs> back to the realm of chaos. <laughs> and they're not even dead. It just takes one strike. It, it's It could be a really fun way to like just kill a bunch of baddies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our viewers, uh, let us know what you think of the subclasses below. Uh, let us know what you like and don't like about them. And um, yeah, thank you very, very much. Stay tuned for us talking more subclasses from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And uh, be safe out there. Have a good day.